Let's turn to our Bible, Word of God. The scripture is taken from the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 9, verse number 13 to 16. Thank you, Jesus. Are you ready? Yes, let's read this together. This wisdom I have also seen under the sun. And it seemed great to me. There was a little city with few men in it. And a great king came against it, besieged it, and built great snares around it. Continue. Now there was found in it a poor wise man. Say poor wise man. Say that again. Poor wise man. And he, by his wisdom, delivered the city. Say, delivered the city. city. Say that again. Delivered the city. city. Yet no one remembered that same poor man. Then I said, wisdom is better than strength. Nevertheless, the poor man's wisdom is despised and his words are not heard. Hmm. If you notice in this verse, it speaks about a poor man. So I have titled my message for this morning, Poor Man's Wisdom. Can a poor man have wisdom? Absolutely yes. So the Bible reveals us, the Bible, the word of God speaks to us this morning. There was a city and in that city there were only few people. So a king came against this city. He wants to capture this city. Say capture the city. And the Bible says, In that city, there was a poor man with wisdom. And the word of God says, and he, by his wisdom, delivered the city. So can a poor man have wisdom? Yes, absolutely. According to the scripture, yes. So after delivering this city, the Bible says, Yet no one remembered that same poor man. Can you see that? No one remembered this poor man after doing such a mega work. After delivering the city, entire city from this king, from this war. They won the battle because of this poor man's wisdom. Amen. So after winning the battle... The people in that city, they just despised him. Can you see that? Nevertheless, the poor man's wisdom is despised. And his words are not heard. First of all, I I need to inform you that I preach my life experience. If I don't go through that, I will never share it with you. Okay? So, whenever I stand here, whenever I bring the word of God to you, it is something which I have gone through. Amen? If I have not gone through it, then I will not know it to preach. Before a preacher preaches, he should go through that. Otherwise, it's it's just a drama. It's just a stage thing. So I want to show you a few things with my wisdom, what God has given to me, and with my knowledge, 
and with my revelation that I have, I like to show you a few things in this verse. Wisdom of God, when, when, because, of, because the wisdom worked in this man's life, the first thing, wisdom identifies the enemy. Say, the wisdom identifies the enemy. Amen? This poor man identified who the enemy was, who is coming against the city. He didn't go and fight another king. He fought the correct person. So the wisdom has to reveal your enemy first. Who is your enemy? Have you watched uh, Johnny English? Have you watched Johnny English? Huh? There are two towers. When he's supposed to land in tower A, he goes and lands in tower B. <laughs> Have you watched that movie? Yeah? Yeah. So the wisdom reveals or wisdom identifies the enemy. Amen. The wisdom that you carry reveals the enemy. Amen. May the wisdom that you carry reveal your enemy. Amen. Amen. May you come to know who your enemies are. The second one, through the wisdom of God and through the revelation of God, wisdom identifies the trouble. What's the trouble that this king is causing? He is trying to take over the territory where this poor man is living. He identifies the Trouble. Have you identified your trouble? Have you identified your enemy? Have you identified the trouble? It's like when you have a stomach ache, you are taking medicine for your headache. <laughs> Something like that. We need to identify the trouble with the wisdom that is given to us. Amen. Say amen, amen if you are with me. Don't leave me alone this morning. Otherwise, it will be very boring. So wisdom identifies the trouble. Amen? amen. Yes. The third point is wisdom reveals the weak ends and the loopholes of the enemy. Hey, you see, you see, this is, this is too much, I think. Are you with me this morning? This is going to save your life. This is going to save your life. I'm telling you. Wisdom reveals the weak ends. Not Saturday, Sunday. <laughs> Only Avishka is getting it. It's okay. Let me preach to you, Avishka, this morning. <laughs> Wisdom reveals the weekends or the loopholes of the enemy. Without knowing the loophole or the weak side of the enemy, it is difficult for us to overcome the enemy. Have you identified the loophole? Everybody has a loophole. Everybody has a weak end. Everybody has a weak area. You can't say no to that. Everyone here, including me, we have a loophole. Somewhere something is not right. Somewhere something is wrong. A loophole and a weak end. There is. So in the same way, this king also had a loophole and weak end so that this poor man can creep through that and destroy the enemy. Have you identified that loophole of your enemy? 
It is very important that we must identify this weekend of the enemy. If we can identify the weekend and the loophole of the enemy, it is so easy for us to overcome the matter. Wisdom delivers the other one. The wisdom delivers. Because of the wisdom that this man carried, that city was delivered. Amen. Without wisdom, they would not have overcome this matter. Because of the wisdom, they delivered, the Bible says. This poor man, one man, delivered the entire city. May you be that man in your family, for your family. May you be that man to the entire, your, your family and your region, to your neighbors. May you be that man and woman to deliver everybody. One man, not an army. An army came against this one man. But the Bible says he overcame and he won the battle because of his wisdom. Wisdom saves lives. The other one. Because of this man's wisdom, many lives were saved. Amen? Amen? Because of this man's, one man's wisdom, many lives, the entire city was saved. Their lives were saved. Including that poor man's life. <laughs> the wisdom that you carry in your life can save your life. Do you know that? The wisdom that you carry can save your life. Not only yours, everyone else's. That surrounding you. It can save your lives. Final one. Wisdom brings recognition. Even though this man was poor. He was identified as a wise man. Hmm? Are you with me? Are you with me? Clear enough, Mama Kena Deva. Ah, very good. <laughs> the wisdom that carry that, that you carry in your life brings recognition to your life. You want to go up in the ladder? You need wisdom. You need a promotion. You need wisdom. You want to do a multi-million business. You need wisdom. You want to do something in this country. You need wisdom. You means all of us together, including me, okay? We all need wisdom. If we have wisdom, we will be recognized. This man was poor. Yes, true. He was poor. He was poor. But still, he was recognized as wise man. Amen. Praise be to God. When a poor man comes and speaks to you, don't despise him. When a poor man, poor wise man, let, let me rephrase it. When a poor wise man comes and speaks to you, don't despise him. If you are wiser than him, then it's a different story. When a poor man comes and tells you something, just give him a minute and listen to him. Poor wise man. See, this is difficult. 
we think we know everything. We think we know everything. So we can't take, hey, who are you? If we say we know everything, that's it. Don't despise the poor man's wisdom. Now, can I take you deeper? Deeper means not in your sleep. <laughs> Come on, can I take you deeper now? Yes. Okay, yeah, that's better. Now let's go and read Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse number 11 to 12. Okay, before we read that, now what do you think? Why did these people despise this poor man? Why? What's the reason? The entire city despised this poor man. What's the reason? What's the reason? Why? What do you think? What could be the reason? Doctors can't speak today. <laughs> What's the reason, do you think? Come on. Come on, anyone else? Poor. Anyone else? Okay, anyone else? Okay, the reason that they despised this man was he was poor. Because he didn't have money. Because he didn't have money, nobody took note of him. Today we have this issue. Let me deal with that today. Those who say poverty is okay, <laughs> you need a brain transplant. If you say you don't need money, well, give me that. Please bring that to me. This poor man was despised and rejected because of one reason, because he did not have money. If he would have had money, Everybody would have been celebrated his life. Hey, come on somebody now. In case if he had money, everybody would have been celebrated his life. But unfortunately, nobody celebrated his life because he was poor. May that poverty leave you today in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. May you be filled with wisdom. Amen. May you be full of the wisdom of God. And may you be full of finances in Jesus name. Amen. Hallelujah. So that no one will despise you. No one will reject you in society or in church or wherever it is. Well, I have decided... You know, God has his timing, true. Long time ago, I have decided I don't want to live like this. Even yesterday, me and Pastor Harin at a wedding, we discussed this matter. We discussed this matter. We don't want to live like this. By the way, can I, can I, can I make an announcement or, or can I share a testimony? Huh? Okay, okay, okay. See, this is, this is only for the glory of God, okay? I'm not boasting. Uh, nothing, nothing, okay? In fact, the Bible says, boast in the Lord. <laughs> huh? So let me boast in the Lord, amen. amen? Amen, okay. So suddenly, two, three weeks ago, something happened to us, to me and my wife, okay? And we were able to give to a miracle dome. We became a Nehemiah. Praise be to God. And today morning, uh, Nalaka. <laughs> Nalaka. Nalaka came running to my room office and he said uh, with a big smile, Pastor, God has blessed me to be a Nehemiah. Yeah. Wow. 
Praise be to God. But he dropped it in this box, but it is a wrong box, by the way. <laughs> so anyway, God is about to give us a land in New Orleans. Yeah. And it is in the process. It is in the process. It is in the process. Amen? It is in the process. And I wish I can show you what I'm going to build. It's a, it's a, it's a mega house, I'm telling you. And it, by the way, it's my, my plan. Huh? My plan. My plan. So I said, this is what we are going to build. So probably next Sunday I'll be able to show you. <laughs> so this is God, you know. This is God. So, and, 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 and the word of God says in, and in Joshua ch chapter 24, verse number 13, it says, I gave you land. You did not labor. Amen. Cities you did not build. Though you live in them, you are eating from vineyards and olive groves. You did not plant. Can you see? This is God. So if you are not ready for this, God cannot give it to you. So as, as we discussed yesterday, Pastor Harin, we, we were ready. Me and Pastor Harin, we were ready. You know, we have told God, God, do anything. You know, we want more from you. So this is the result that we are getting now. Me and wife, we are going to be blessed with that house. I'm telling you. So this poor man was despised for what? This poor man was rejected for what? For, for his poverty. I cancel that poverty in your life in Jesus' name. May that poverty live everyone's life, including me, including every pastor and elder in this church. Let that poverty live in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. So now let's go to book of Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse number 11 to 12. It says, wisdom is even better when you have what? Uh, can you see that now? Can you see that now? You thought I am speaking of myself. No, it is the word of God. Wisdom is even better when you have money. Both are a benefit as you go through life. Wisdom and money can get you almost. Come on now, come on now, come on now. Say that word. Wisdom and money can get you almost. Come on now, I, yo, we have 300 plus people in this room. Wisdom and money can get you almost anything, beloved, anything. Can you see that? So if you are still saying, huh, I am happy where I am, God bless you. God bless you. Few months ago, I said, I will see my Audi downstairs parked. But now I say, hold on. <laughs> Bless you, my brother. But now I say, my Mercedes Benz will be parked. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's read. One, two, three, go. Wisdom is even better when you have money. Let, oh, I think we need to read that again until we get it. Let, let's read that again, loud and clear. For, yes. Money, yes. Both are a benefit as you go through life. Wisdom and money can get you almost anything, but only wisdom can save your life. This is what happened to that poor man. Because, the, because of the wisdom, their lives were saved. You see? Because of the wisdom, their lives were saved. But he was despised and rejected because he didn't have money. So in life, we all need wisdom. In life, we all need what? 
Money. Are you scared to say that word? Don't be scared. Don't be scared. Don't be scared. You know, the biggest spirit today in this world, do you know what it is? Spirit of poverty. Let me tell you that if you don't know. Spirit of poverty is the biggest battle for everybody. So we need to come out of this. Say amen at least for that. Amen. amen. I, I know that we are coming out of today. As we read this scripture, something is happening in our lives. Amen. Something is, is, is being imparted to our spirit this morning. Are you listening to me? Something is being done in our faith. Something is being done in our spirit. Something is being done in our life as we read these scriptures. So it is important for, for a Christian to have wisdom, Pastor Daniel, and for you to have money. It is important, Asra Sankar. Very important. So it is wisdom and money goes together. When you have money and when you have wisdom, people will celebrate your life. And I believe and I can see that is going to happen at City Church. Amen. Amen. It is going to happen for all of us. People will begin to celebrate our lives. Amen. Don't worry if you want to shout and scream, you are free to do that. Amen. Because these words are not my words. These words are coming from the spirit. These words are written in the word of God. And if you want to shout and receive, just say something and receive it. I see that our lives are changing, beloved. We are going from glory to glory. Amen. You are full of wisdom and you are full of money also. You are full of wisdom and you are full of money also. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. If you want to have, if you want to open a new business, what do you need? You need wisdom and you need money. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Spirit of the Living Father. That your lives will, no one will despise you hereafter. Amen. No one will reject hereafter. May everybody recognize you in Jesus name. Amen. Let there be a recognition for all of us. Let there be a recognition for all of us in Jesus name. Come on somebody, receive this word. Let there be recognition. Amen. Let there be money and let there be wisdom. For all of us, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Now, here is the game changer. Say game changer. Game. Yes. If I don't bring this into Christ, then it will be very carnal. You see? That's where we can go wrong. Whatever we preach, whatever we teach, whatever we say in, from this pulpit should reflect Christ. Okay. So can I take you deeper now? Amen. Thank you, Jesus. So now let's read quickly. Luke chapter 4, verse number 18. Hmm. Jesus says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Are you with me? Yes. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me. What? To what? To do what? To preach the gospel to the poor. And we looked at a poor man. In the book of Ecclesiastes, saying he has no money because he has no money. He was rejected. He was despised. And Jesus comes to the scene and he says, I have come to preach the gospel to the poor. I know what you are thinking. Pastor, now all this time you preached money and um, <laughs> wisdom. And... 
hold on. Hold on. Amen. Hold on. Good news or uh, gospel means what? <laughs> Father, give us wisdom. <laughs> Gospel slash good news. What do you think? What do you think? With one word, if, if someone can say. It is called grace. Good news is what? Grace. I heard somebody saying, Jesus never preached grace. I was watching this video. And this guy said, Jesus never preached grace. Well, I want to take you to John chapter 1 verse number 14. And the word became flesh and dwelled among us. And we beheld his glory. The glory as of the only begotten. Of the Father, what? Full of grace and truth. Beloved, Jesus means grace. Jesus means grace. He doesn't have to preach grace. He himself is grace. Are you with me, church? He doesn't have to preach grace. Jesus is grace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's continue. Let's continue. Look at this. Yes. 15. John bore witness of him and cried out saying, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me is perfected before me, for he was before me. Okay. Continue. And of his fullness, we have, we have all received what? Grace for grace. Come on. We have, we have all received and grace for grace. For the law was given through Moses, but grace and truth came through Christ Jesus, beloved. Amen. Grace came through Jesus. So I was a little worried when this man said, Jesus never preached grace. So now according to uh, Luke chapter 4 verse number 18, Jesus comes to the scene and he says, I have come to preach the gospel. So what Jesus offers here is grace to the poor man. Amen. Jesus is offering grace to the poor man. Okay. I was in this place once. I was there. I was there. That's why I'm preaching. I had wisdom, but I never spoke. I had wisdom, but I never tried to show my colors. I had wisdom. I never tried to do anything about my spiritual father. I had wisdom. I never tried to overtake Pastor Harin. I had wisdom, but I didn't try to do anything beyond uh, Subodha. I had wisdom, but I didn't try to teach a lesson to Dr. Ronnie. I had wisdom. I didn't try to do any of that. I just kept my mouth shut. I just kept my mouth shut. Why? Because I was poor. <laughs> but today I can speak. Today I can speak. Today I can speak. Because God is doing something in my finances. So when I was poor, what was offered to me? Come on now. It was grace. I stand here because of the grace of God. Come on now. Can you see that? I preach because of the grace of God. I heal the sick because of the grace of God. We prophesy because of the grace of God. Amen. We, we counsel people because of the grace of God. Not because of anything.
We do things because of the grace of God that is given to me. I stand here because of the grace of God. Amen. I stand here and I preach and I bring the word of God because of the grace of God that is in my life, beloved. And never forget who helped you along the way. People like Pastor Harin, people like Pastor Sheka, my goodness. Our spiritual father, Pastor Jerome, man of God, the general of this nation. Don't forget them. Because of them only, I'm standing here today. And because of Christ, and because of that grace. That grace flows from the top, beloved. From our spiritual father to the, uh, the lowest person. So what Jesus offers to the poor man is grace. Are we, are we clear with that? He offers grace. You know why? So that that poor man can come up, beloved. Uh, you see? So that poor man can come up in his life. That is the reason Jesus offers grace to the poor. And if you can't use that grace to come up in your life, then I don't know what will help you to come up in your life. Take maximum use of the grace of God. You are still struggling to open your bank bank account because you have forgotten the grace you are still struggling to start your business because you have forgotten the grace you are still struggling to pay your bills because you have forgotten the grace of God you are still struggling to find your partner you have forgotten the grace of God that is given to you beloved don't forget the grace of God God gives all of us the grace so that we can come up in our lives. Not for anything else. Not to sin, go and sin. No. Most of us have taken this grace as a license to sin. We sin and we go back and say, Lord, because of your grace, because of your righteousness, because of your blood, da di da di da, we are saved. That's not the reason the grace is given to us. The grace is given to us so that we can build our lives. Are you listening to me? So, what point wisdom comes in? Can I answer that question? Now, we know the grace. The, to the poor man, the grace is given. So what point we use the wisdom? Okay, let's, 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 let's go. Let's go and see Isaiah. Chapter 37, verse number 30. Yes. This shall be a sign to you. You shall eat this year such as grows of itself. And the second year what spr springs from the same. Also in the third year, sow and reap, plant vineyards and eat the fruit of them, beloved. Stefan, can you read that for us, please? One by one. Are you with me, church? Okay, good. Let's read that. Stephan. This shall be a sign to yes. you. So this shall be a sign to you. Okay, to all of us. Now listen carefully. You read. shall eat this year such as grows of itself. Okay, hold on. In the first year, you shall eat such as grows of itself. Okay? The first year, we will eat without any sowing or reaping. Are you, are you catching this? Yeah. The first year, now Jesus came for what? To offer what? Offer grace. To whom? To the poor, right? So this is the life I'm comparing to that poor man's life, first year he shall eat. He shall eat this such as grows of itself. itself. So what is that called? It is called 
grace. Amen. Are you with me? Don't miss this. Don't drop this. Stay with me and receive this word and this will bless you. Your lives will never be the same again. First year grows of itself. You shall eat that grows of itself. Sir, read us, Stefan now. And the second year. And the second year. Look at this. Yes. What springs from the same. Yeah. What springs from the same. Okay. So that is also called grace. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to plow the ground. You don't have to plant a seed. You don't have to do anything. But grace brings to you. Amen. Grace Amen. brings the fruits to Amen. you. Amen. Hallelujah. Look at this. The final one. Also in the third year. Also in the third year. Say in the third year. Third year. Yes. Sow and reap. Sow and reap. Plant vineyards. Plant vineyards. And eat the fruit of them. And eat the fruit of them. What is this beloved? This is called wisdom. First year is grace. Uh, you, you, you Don't miss this. I'm telling you. Don't miss this beloved. Don't miss this. First year is grace. Say first year. Is, is, grace. Grace. is grace. Second year, Second year is, grace. is grace. But third year, but third year is wisdom. Is wisdom. <laughs> can you see that? First year, it will grow, you can eat it. Second year, out of that, it will come, you can eat it. But third year, the Lord says, go and sow. Plant. Can you see also in the third year, sow and reap. For you to sow, you need money, beloved. For you to sow, <laughs> you need wisdom. We need wisdom to sow in the third year. So if we, you know, you know what we are trying to do. We are trying to continue in that same grace. Therefore, there is no growth. We are trying to, you know, continue in that same grace. That's why we don't see any growth in our lives. If you want to see growth in your life, then you got to use your wisdom. First year and second year, God gives you grace. But on the third year, with the grace of God, you have to bring your wisdom, wisdom. of God also into it, beloved. <laughs> You see, that's why we need wisdom. Without wisdom and money, we can't sow anything. You want to sow to the kingdom of God, what are you going to sow? You need money. In the third year, learn to use the grace and the wisdom that God has given you. If you don't use the wisdom on the third year with the grace that you have received, we can't expect a growth. Hmm. Are you getting me? Yes. Are you catching this? Yes. Is this getting through to you Amen. this morning? Yes. So this is a problem that Christians have today. We are depending so much on the grace of God, which we have to do. Without the grace, we are absolutely nothing. Amen. We are absolutely nothing. But the wisdom, what the but with the grace of God, we need to use our wisdom also. So if we can use the grace and the wisdom of God together, beloved, when you sow, you will begin to reap. Amen. When you plant vineyards and you will eat the fruit of them. That is what the Bible says. So don't fight yourself that you don't need money. Don't fight yourself that you don't need wisdom. All of us in this place, we need wisdom and we need money. I am not a prosperity preacher, by the way. But the gospel is prosperous. And I'm not asking money from you. Hmm. 
So what point do we plug ourselves with the wisdom? What point we bring the grace of God and the wisdom of God together? That you need to discern. First year is the grace of God. Second year is the grace of God. But the third year is the grace of God and the wisdom of God. If you want to see growth, we need the grace and the wisdom. Grace of God will bring us from the grass level. I was there, I was there, I was there on the grass level, beloved. Didn't had money to go in the bus. I'm telling you, I didn't have two rupees to go in the bus. One day I have to tell the conductor, sorry, I don't have money. Can you drop me free? This is my story. I'm sharing with you. I didn't have two rupees, beloved. I didn't have two rupees to go in the bus. I have walked from my home to my office. From Devala to Bambalapiti, I have walked because I have no money to go in the bus. I had no food to eat, beloved. What kept me during that time is the grace of God. What kept me going during that period is the grace of God. I wanted to study, but I didn't have money. I was living in a small room like this, beloved. Small room. Maybe a 20 by 20 room. That's it. No money. What kept me going is the grace of God. The first year is the grace of God. And from there, God did something. He didn't give me everything. He gives little by little, you know. From that first year, He took me to the second year. There also, I experienced the grace of God. Mightily and tremendously. But the third year, if I want to grow, if I want to reach higher, I need to use my wisdom. Today, I'm using my wisdom. Today, I'm using the same grace that was given to me. Amen. So with the grace and with the wisdom, I'm reaching higher. God is about to do something marvelous in this place. I can feel that. Not feeling, I know, I know. You know, feeling is a wrong word. We don't move with the feelings. If we move with the feelings, we will be in trouble. We need to know what God is doing. So I know that God is bringing entire city church together to a higher place. Amen. He is bringing all of us together to a higher place. Amen. With the wisdom of God and with the grace of God, the money is going to come in and you are going to sow very high in your life. If you come and speak to me about business, I can counsel you. You know why? Because of the grace of God. Because of the wisdom of God. I don't have any degrees. I don't have any business study qualification. No.
But if you come and speak to me, I can help you. Because there's so much in my mind which is given to me by the grace of God, by the wisdom of God. You know, my sister is trying to uh, doing a business. She's trying to do a business. She is uh, starting her business. I am sharing things with her little by little. I sent her a list of nine things, right? She was shocked. This is what you do, and this is what you need to do. Do this, 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 this. Nine things. Which will a book will not give you. If we don't use our wisdom, we will be in the same place every day. So use your wisdom, not forgetting the grace of God. And the money will come to you. Thank you, Jesus. Are you doing okay? Praise be to God. Thank you, Lord. Final scripture. Let's conclude. Romans chapter 5, verse number 17. For if by the one man's offense... That reigned through the one, much more those who receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness will reign in life through the one Jesus Christ. Beloved, what I'm trying to tell you is if you want to reign in your life, the Bible says we need. The abundance of grace. Can you see that? Can you see that? If anybody is interested in reigning in your life. If you are interested in reigning in your life. If you are interested in reigning in your life. I will tell this. I will repeat this until you get it. If you are interested in reigning in your life. If you are interested in reigning in your life, beloved. If you are interested in reigning in your life. Hallelujah. If you are interested in reigning in your life, beloved. There is something called abundance of grace. Not just grace, but the abundance of grace. Amen. The abundance of grace will help you to come up in that in in your life beloved the abundance of grace will help you to come up in your life from grass level to a higher level beloved to a grass level to a higher level the abundance of god will help you if you want to reign we need the abundance of grace we need the wisdom and we need money. Amen. Amen. Now when Jesus was walking in this earth. He had money. Nothing to argue. Some say Jesus is poor. No, he is not poor. He is rich. Jesus. Came to the blind man and healed the blind. Because of the grace. Amen. So that blind man can go back and live his life. So what helped him is the grace. So if he wants to move in his life, he needs to use his wisdom. Amen. So in the, in the, during the wedding, Jesus comes there and he turns the water into wine. What is that called? Grace, beloved. Grace. Don't forget the grace. Amen. 
Say, I will not forget the grace. I will not forget the grace. Uh, Jesus comes to the tomb of Lazarus and he says, Lazarus, come out. What is that called? Grace, beloved. Grace. There is a starting point for everybody in grace. There is a starting point for everybody. Don't miss that grace. And don't just sit and wait with that grace. Make use of that grace. Amen. In the first year and in the second year, the grace will work for you. Without you doing anything, the grace will work for you. But on the third year, if you want to grow and if you want to see something great and if you want to sow and if you want to reap and if you want to plant vineyards and to eat of the fruit of that, you need the grace and the wisdom. Hallelujah.